Guys, McKay with another clean tech daily technology news review. And in this video, I will be talking about exactly the new thing that Meta just built, as well as why I think Meta may win long term when it comes to the metaverse, whatever that may be. And I'll tell you exactly why I think what I think and where I got it from and what will happen in the future with the metaverse. So let's get started. So I saw this headline this morning that says Meta unveils a new AI supercomputer. Now, the details behind this supercomputer are absolutely incredible. I don't know if this is the actual supercomputer. This just may be a stock image. Oh, it actually says... Um, it, this may actually be it. I don't know. Um, so this actually was taken by Meta Platforms, also known as Facebook. And it took about two years to, of work involving hundreds of people, several hundreds of people. So I don't know if that's the new one that they're talking about or if that's just a another huge data collection room they have for um, their servers. All right. So the AI research super cluster was the result of nearly two years of work, often conducted remotely during the height of the pandemic and led by Facebook's parent AI and infrastructure teams. Hundreds of people, including researchers, partners from NVIDIA, which is a graphics card and GPU company. They may not even do GPUs, um, but they do supply a lot of graphics cards um, were involved in the project. The company said now they talked about it a little bit. Um, they go into a little bit more of the history of it, but what I want to focus on are a couple of key details. One of the key details being that <clears throat> the aim is to boost capabilities to one day train models with more than a trillion parameters on data sets and as a large as an exabyte, which is roughly equivalent to 36,000 hour years of high quality video, 36,000 years. That is a lot of space for people to be able to, to house. The experiences we're building for the metaverse require enormous computing power, obviously. Um, and that was Mark Zuckerberg when he provided that statement to the uh, New York, uh, the, I'm sorry, the Wall Street Journal. Meta's AI supercomputers houses 6,080 NVIDIA graphics cards. Maybe that's where all the graphics cards went when everybody wanted them. Maybe that's why they're so expensive because freaking Meta took them all. All right, by midsummer, when the AI research supercluster is fully built, it will house some of 16,000 GPUs. No wonder we're having a, a chip GPU graphics card shortages because Meta is taking them all. The company declined to comment on the location of the facility or the cost. I'm surprised they kept the cost kind of quiet, but we'll probably see. I don't know. I'll be curious to see how much that that will run them. Um, I, I want to see the electricity bill of that sucker. All right. <clears throat> the other thing that I want to talk about was the how why I think Meta is going to win in terms of the in terms of the metaverse. Why I think they'll win and how they'll win. And it comes from one simple, two simple words: data collection. It says in a quote right here, in Facebook's case, I suspect what they're looking at is the treasure trove that they have had that that they have of the data that they get from their users. And that's a huge data set too big for most of the artificial intelligence systems that researchers typically use. So the saying Facebook has, I don't even know how to measure it, but billions of people's data because I don't know the statistics, but let's, let's Google it together. How many people use Facebook? How many people use Facebook? Whoops, Facebook. If we look at this, 2.6 billion monthly users. How many people are on Earth? How many people are on Earth? 7.3 billion. So a little under a third of people monthly use Facebook. Absolutely crazy. That's not including Instagram either or WhatsApp. Facebook or Meta now has more data than anybody, I believe. Now, the only thing I would be curious to see how much more data they have than Google if they have more data. Um, let's see how many people use Google on monthly. 2.6, 1 billion. So technically on a month to month basis, Facebook has more users than Google, which is extremely interesting. So let's go ahead and it's the most visited website on the planet. I guess, they're, I guess it's not an application. Um, okay. So that I thought was, is the reason why Facebook or meta will win in terms of the metaverse is because of the amount of data they have about each individual, knowing their likes or dislikes. And if they can cater the metaverse platform to when they first put the goggles on, if like, if anybody ever first puts the goggles on and signs in, I guarantee they're going to have the person's likes, dislikes. They're going to hook that user into wanting to stay. And I think that's one of the reasons that they're going to want to keep that's how, why they want to house so much data as well as they need to train this data. So all this data they have, like you said, it's too big for most AI com AI systems that typical researchers typically use. So they need something to train all this data to take all these points of data and form it into something that's like some sort of AI, whatever. 
So this paragraph right here, I feel like is one of the most under, it's one of the most forgotten things is that the amount of data that people have, that's how people spend their ad dollars is based on demographics, based on interests, based on everything. I'm sure we've all heard that, then that thing where you click on a website to go say like best pet leash and all of a sudden you have 50 advertisements for pet leashes. Well, Google and Facebook are big culprits of that. Sometimes people even think their phones listen to them. That's up for a debate. That's another video. Hopefully we can make a video about that because I find that personally extremely interesting. So that is... Um, eventually, the supercomputer will help Meta's researchers build an AI model that can work across hundreds of language, analyze text, images, and video together and develop augmented reality tools, the company said. So, obviously, extremely interesting. There's so much to, there's so much complexity here. And I've, I've often made a ton of different videos regarding the metaverse, so check that out. Um, the other thing that I want to talk about is our sponsor today, and that is Clean Otter. Clean, Clean Otter is the ultimate parental control. So what it is, is oftentimes, especially when the metaverse becomes more and more prevalent, one of the most pop bought, gifts, bought gifts for kids this Christmas was the Oculus goggles. And sometimes it's really difficult to lose, it's easy to lose track of time when you're in the goggles. So what the Clean Otter does is it provides a solution for parents to be able to turn the internet on and off when they want. And you can also limit websites that kids can and cannot visit. Um, and that's just a couple of the capabilities that Clean Otter has. It blankets your entire house in internet. So as you can see from this illustration here, you can have a, a MacBook, um, a smart TV, game console, teenager, iPod, laptop. It filters through everything, not the teenager, but the devices the teenagers use. So this is an easy to use solution. Thousands of people across America are using it and it is incredibly intelligent. We can block keywords. So if you don't want your kids searching for cat videos, you can block the word cats and you cannot search cat videos anymore. These are some of the incredible features that Clean Editor has. And if you have any questions about it, feel free to leave us a question in the comments or check the links in the description down below for more information. I hope you guys enjoy this video. And like always, we'll see you next time. Happy tech reviews.